Welcome to art time today. Today is jungle day. We are going to draw and then paint a jungle. Leaves and flowers and all kinds of things. Probably not aquarium plants, but they're leafy and green, right? Right? That works. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be drawing on a good piece of paper and probably using a pencil to do that part. And then we're going to paint it. And this one I've started painting a little bit, one that I've made a little while ago. You're going to need today, obviously, paper, uh, pencils uh, for your drawing. Uh, I'm going to use a Sharpie so that you can see what I'm doing. I think that's going to make it easier for you. But you're going to also need some kind of paint unless you're going to just color these in, which is perfectly fine too. But I'm going to talk to you about colors and color wheel and all different kinds of stuff today. Um, the paints that I use are tempera paint. They come in a bottle, usually like this. But sometimes they come um, differently when you go to your craft store um, and buy them. I like to use egg cartons. But you can put, them, put the paint in little Dixie cups any kind of way that you want to. You can even use a paper plate and put little drips of paint around the outside of the paper plate. Um, that works fine as well. When I put my paint in my tray, I try to skip a little space so there's a little room between it. And then I use the back of my egg carton to do the mixing on. So when I'm mixing my colors, I just use the back of the egg carton. It's very, very handy. I like to have two different kinds of paint brushes, usually a thicker one for the larger areas and a thin and skinny one to do the details or the smaller areas. And then you always need some water. I found these dog bowls at Ikea years ago and I bought them for my classroom. They don't tip over, so they're perfect. So I have water about halfway full in my dog bowl, um, which I love and a paper towel. The paper towel will be your best friend while you're painting because it's going to keep your paintbrush clean when it comes out of one color, gets rinsed off, and wants to go into the next color. Washing your paintbrush is one of the most important parts of painting. Keeping your paint clean in your tray so you can use it over and over again. If you just dipped red into yellow and then green into yellow and then blue, the yellow would no longer be yellow. It would be kind of this muddy brown color. So it's important to dry your brush on your best friend. Hold it close to your heart. So, okay, let's do some drawing. Um, remember, uh, if you have watched a few of the other videos, I have done a uh, little bird drawing, a little cute little bird drawing. I did this silly monkey. I've done this parrot, nice colorful parrot. And I'm going to spin out of the way here. And I've done this lion. And today we're going to put them all together into a jungle. Now I've started drawing this one um, so we can spend a lot of time on the painting part of it. When you start out on your blank paper, picture in your eyes or picture in your brain where you want your animals to go and then where you want your plants to go around the animals. That's what artist and author illustrator Keith Baker does. He looks at where the animals are going to be and then we'll draw them according to what's overlapping the other thing. Some things are in front and some things are behind. Like this monkey is overlapped by this leaf. So in order to make that work, you have to draw the leaf first and then put the monkey behind it. This tiger is in front of these leaves, so you would draw the tiger first before the leaves. So there's some planning to do um, as you start drawing to know what you want close and what you want far away. I love the details that Keith Baker gets in his ferns and flowers and leaves and everything. Beautiful, beautiful illustrator. Look for some of his books. Who is the Beast is one of my favorites. 
So what I have done here is I have drawn some large leaves, one in front of the other. I've added some big zigzags where you draw tall, big zigzags. I've drawn a part of my lion here and I can draw a part of his belly, but then I can put leaves and lines and grasses up behind him and just kind of fill in the space. So as I'm going, I can add all kinds of things. You can even add butterflies if you want to, or ladybugs sitting on your branches. You can add little ladybugs in here. You can add butterflies flying around. But it's important to have leaves coming in from all sides. Don't just think you need leaves from the bottom. If you're in the jungle, there's going to be leaves everywhere. You're going to have leaves over your head and leaves around the sides. And the monkeys are going to be poking through. Not that I'm a monkey or anything, but monkeys will poke through. And they'll peek through. So you can do that. You can even add like little animals in behind your grasses. So I've drawn my little monkey, like this little guy here. And I've drawn my little snake on a branch. I've drawn my little tiger or lion. But now I'm going to draw a parrot in the tree up here. And I know these animals are going to be all different sizes. That's fine. That's fine. So let's, I'm going to just start drawing my little parrot with an eye, the beak. You can look back at the other videos to see how I drew the parrot step by step. And I'm going to make the feathers, the wing feathers, come back up into the body. And then this one will come down. It has to jump over, turn around and come back up, turn around and come back up. I make just a few little feathers on each side. And then a long tail, usually, for these guys. That's a super long tail. Okay, add some details. Now, he's supposed to be standing on something. He, otherwise, he's just like... No wings out in the middle of the air. So we need to put a branch. So I'm going to add a branch coming from behind here that's going to come kind of right through the middle of the fat part of him. Could be like a vine or something. Remember I've said where the leaves are, it's going to be a little bit thinner. And it'll be thicker up nearer where the tree would be. So you can fill in spaces. You can make it all kinds of fancy, lots and lots of things. I would still, if I was going to be using this as my finished one, I would still start putting like big ferns or something up in here and make that behind the monkey. Make it behind by jumping over. So you can make all kinds of leaves. They don't even have to be something you'd actually see in nature. It can be out of your imagination. Think of cool ideas. So you can make all kinds of things. And then you can even add extra designs. If you are choosing not to paint or you don't have the paint that you want to use, these are also great colored in. Colored pencils, markers, or crayons. And watercolor paint is always a good option too if you do not have tempera paint handy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the color wheel and painting so that when we start mixing up our colors, we'll kind of have an idea of what it is we want to make. Because I know that we want to make um, some brown for our monkey. We want to make some orange and some green, maybe some pink even. So let's see how to do that. So a color wheel is a very important tool in art. It helps you learn the primary colors and the secondary colors. It helps you learn those. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Those colors we don't mix up. We go to the store and we buy red, yellow, and blue, just like this. We buy them in a bottle. Now, once you have your red, yellow, and blue paint, you can make pretty much any other color. So between... There, that's better. Between the red and yellow, what color do we have? 
Sure, it's orange because we know that red and yellow make orange. Between yellow and blue, we have green because we know yellow and blue make green. And then down here between the red and blue, we have a violet or purple because red and blue make violet. Now, if you add a whole bunch of red to that yellow, you're going to get a reddish orange. If you add more yellow, it'll be a yellow orange. Same thing with the green. If you put a bunch of yellow in it, it's going to be yellow green. If you put a bunch of blue, it'll be blue green. Same thing down here with the violet. A lot of red, it'll be a red violet. And a lot of blue, it'll be a blue violet. Now, what happens if you want to make it light or dark? You'll start adding black or white. White, when you add it, makes it light, like a tint. It's lighter, it's more pale. If you add black, it'll make it darker, like the shade. So, how's that for a quick art lesson? Let's get to the fun stuff. So, I'm gonna grab my uh, one paintbrush. Let me move my primary colors out of the way. And I'm gonna grab my best friend and keep it over here next to me. I'm gonna start with my uh, smaller brush to start with. Every time I pull this brush, let me pull this closer to me. Is, is this in the picture, Mr. Fred, down here by me? Can we see this down here? Fantastic. So I'll keep the paints a little bit closer like this. Does that, that works out in the, in the frame? Fantastic. Oh, Mr. Fred, I could not do this without you. It would be so boring. The camera would never zoom in or out or pan back and forth. It would just be me. Hey, oh, Mr. Fred, where are we going? Let's get, back. oh, okay, here we are. So I'm gonna start out and I wanna paint some, uh-oh. I'm gonna paint some green leaves. I have one here started that I drew with a pencil. Um, I know you can't see what's here that well, but I drew it with a pencil so that um, it'll be a better finished product at the end. So let's start with my, my smaller brush and I'm gonna paint something green. So I'm gonna dip in my green and I'm just gonna paint it right on the paper. And this is the green that comes right out of the jar, the, the kind of paint that I have. This is what the green looks like. If you have green paint in a jar, your green paint could be a little bit different than my green paint, but that's fine. So now I wanna make some yellow green. So I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm gonna get a dip, one dip, two dips, and as I put my brush on, I give it a twist, and I'm gonna get a third dip of yellow because you need a lot of yellow to turn that into yellow green. Now, I cannot just dip right into the green. So we go into the bucket, rinse it out really well, and I like to twist my brush on the edge. That gets the extra drips out and it keeps your brush in a point. If you tap, tap, tap it, besides the paint or, paint or water splattering around, it's gonna just kinda, it won't put your brush back to a point and that's kinda fun to do too. Then you're gonna wipe it on your best friend and make sure that it's coming out relatively clean. It might have a little bit of yellow or green on it, but it shouldn't be much, just a little bit. I'm gonna get one baby drip of green and put it right on that yellow. If I need more green, problem is I've got a lot of yellow on here still. I have to rinse it again. And it is a little bit tedious, but it will keep your paints clean. I'm gonna get another little bit of green. And before I mix it completely together, I'm gonna to just start painting with it because I think that'll make it kind of streaky a little bit. So I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna grab a little more paint. I like to paint the edges that I have with the tip of my brush. And if I have to turn it, I'm a little awkward here. Am I out of the way or am I sitting in the way of my art again? Sometimes I just put my head right in the middle of the picture. Am I out of the way? Okay, good job. So paint it. I want to kind of make this, a couple of these, a little more yellow. And you can paint it very carefully all the way to the edges. It's a good idea to have 
uh, newspaper under you when you're painting so that you're not painting on your good dining room table. Maybe you have an art table, but you still might want to put newspaper underneath you. That's another good tip. Okay, so that was the yellow, green, and the green. Let's go with orange. Let's make some orange. You guys know how to do that? You know how to make orange, right? So let's start out. Do I start out with the red or the yellow? What's going to be better? Start out with a lighter color. So that would be yellow. Always rinse your brush, rub it on your little best friend. I'm going to start out with a couple of drips of yellow again. I'm going to blob it on here. And red is such a strong, strong color. Let me wash my brush, rub it on the edge, roll it. Oh boy. That time when I rolled it, I got paint all over it. So I know it's not clean. <clears throat> So rub it again. Now it's much cleaner. I'm going to get one little drip of red and swirl that right into the yellow. Twist the brush. You never want to push the brush down so all the, all the hairs on the end stick out. You always want to keep the paintbrush in a nice point. And then pick a space to paint. This is a snake that's in a tree and it won't really look like a snake until I go back over it at the end. But here's a little snake I have wrapped around a tree. And here's his little tail up here at the end. And here's his head. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Because I need to, I'll need to go back in and put some details in here in a little bit. There's a snake. Let's, we have quite a bit of orange on here. Maybe I could do a few more leaves up high. So you can paint in the leaves. And if all of a sudden you want more leaves that you hadn't already drawn, you can go ahead and add more. You don't have to just follow what you've already done. You can add more, make some more leaves and all kinds of cool stuff. So, you know, paint with your colors. Now, um, let's make a little purple and pink. Uh, rinse out brush, rub it, twist it, make sure it's clean. Wipe it on the side. There it is. Okay purple, blue, and red. Here's some blue, blue, and rinse out, grab a little red, and I'm going to put about the same amount of red and blue to make my purple, and I'm going to paint these leaves over here, and this one's a little bit red-violet. I must have a little more red than blue in this one. And that's fine because we're doing this kind of out of our imagination anyway. So you can paint that, you can paint flowers, anything else. Now, if you want to make it a lighter purple to make it like lavender, a real pretty pinky, pinky purple color, what you're going to want to do is add white. And in order to add the white, make sure your paintbrush is really clean. That's what I'm doing now. I can't get the red out. Okay, here's some white and I'm going to put it right over here in my purple and I'm going to smear that around and mix that up really well and then I can paint something else and you can see how that comes out that adds a lighter to it it'll make it nice and light so do as you're painting try different kinds of mixing but make sure you're always washing your brush between your colors have fun fill it in now, last thing I'm going to show you on the painting is how to, what in the world's happening with this little one? I'm, I'm painting sideways here. Let's, let's make that leaf a little different. Well, I might have to put a little animal over the top of that one. Okay, so this guy was brown, right? To make brown, you're going to be mixing all three primaries together. So I already have some uh, purple and I already have some orange. And I already have some green up here. So if I mix the three secondary colors, if I get purple and green and orange and I mix those together, you're going to get some kind of brown. It may take a minute because it's going to end up being, where's my monkey? Oh, here he is. Um, it's going to be, see this guy right now, very yellowish color. It's not, a, not a, a great color, so I think we're going to add um, the opposite of yellow. If it's yellowish, we're going to add the opposite of yellow, which is 
violet or purple. So I'm going to grab some of my violet and put that over here. See if I can turn this a little more brown. Yep, see it, it, it darkened it down, it, it toned it down, and it made it a little bit of a brown. So mix all three primaries to get your brown. It could even stand a little bit more. Oh, I'm not sure that's going to work. I think I added white to that now. Oh, no, there we go. That's a pretty good brown. So you want to mix all three primaries to get your brown color. And here's my monkey kind of a rough paint job, but you can get the idea. So there's the monkey. There's the guys. The last thing I need to show you is what you will do um, at the very, very end. This painting is dry. You can see our monkey does not have a face. And so what we want to do is we want to add the details of the face. So I'm going to paint and also the leaves want some detail. I know this is not completely done yet, but I'm going to show you how to add. Oh boy, that's going to drip. Um, so I'm going to get some black paint and I'm going to go back over where my little eye was. And I'm going to go back where my little nose was. And I'm going to go back where my little smile was to make this guy, I'm going to put a little eyelid on him. And you can use your black after you've finished and you've painted the sky to go back in and also add details to your leaves. You can add shadows under your branches and you can use your darker colors to really fill it in and make it super cool. Um, when you are uh, working with your blue sky or if you want blue sky in there, you can just paint it in around behind it. Remember adding white to the blue will make it lighter and I think that will look really cool. So that is your jungle. Um, check back in the other videos how to draw the monkey, the lion, the birds, and even the snake is in there with the, with the lion, I think. Um, and have some fun. Grab your uh, friends, show your friends what you've been working on, get your paint, get your fun times ready, and start painting. I sure hope you had fun today. And I hope you continue working on your painting until it's completely done. You can frame it and put it in your living room. Take care, everybody. Always remember, make time for art time today. Bye-bye.